In this session, we'll be looking at the last of our functional budgets, which is our labour budget. So we want to consider, now that we know how many units we're going to produce of each of our products, we need to know two things. How many labour hours do we expect to use in the production of these units? And what is the total cost going to be of those labour hours? So continuing on from our previous example, we're now told that our production figures for Delia Limited's three products are as before for Collaret 2,100 units, for Pom Pom 4,200 units and for Cacti 3,100 units. We've also been given now some information about our labour usage for each of these products. So we've been told how many labour hours we expect to use in the production of each of the three products. We've also been told what the expected or budgeted labour rate per hour is going to be. And we need to prepare, based on this information, our labour budget for the year. So let's have a look. Our labour budget then, we need to consider each of our three products. So the collaret, the pom-pom, and the cacti. We know how many units we're going to produce of each product. So our production units. And in addition, we know what our labour hour usage will be per unit of each product. So picking up the information from the question, for, for the collaret, it'll take four hours per unit. For the pom-pom, six hours per unit. And for cacti, eight hours per unit. The first thing we need to do then is very simply calculate what is our total labour hour usage going to be. This should be a straightforward calculation. So our total labour hours for the collaret will be the 2,100 units multiplied by 4 hours per unit. And that will give us a total of 8,400 hours. Very straightforward. Likewise, for the pom-pom, we're going to produce 4,200 units. Each unit should take six hours to produce, so our total labour hour usage will be 25,200 hours. Finally, for the cacti, we're going to produce 3,100 units, multiplied by eight hours per unit, gives us a total of 24,800 hours. And so we've completed the first part of our labour budget. We know what our expected labour hour usage for the year is going to be. Last little bit then is to calculate how much we expect these labour hours to cost us. For this, we need to look at our labour rate per hour. And we're told for each of the three products, our labour rate is going to be £8.50. We'll just put that in. So £8.50 per hour for all three products. Should be very straightforward then to calculate our labour cost. For each of our three products again, for the collaret, we're going to work a total of 8,400 hours. Multiply by £8.50 per hour gives us a total of 71,400. For the pom-pom, 25,200 hours multiplied by £8.50 gives us 214,200. And finally, for the cacti, we're going to work 24,800 hours 
at 850 each again. Gives us 210,800. And so our labour budget is complete. I hope you found that quite straightforward. The next thing we want to consider in this session is inefficiencies in our production process. So, so far in all of the per functional budgets we have prepared, we have assumed that our production process is 100% efficient. So, meaning there's no material wastage in the process. All of the units we produce are of sufficient quality, so there's no defects. And we have also assumed that all of the labour hours our staff work and are paid for will be productive hours. Now, in reality, this is unlikely to be the case. We will usually find in any production process there are going to be inefficiencies. So perhaps if we produce 100 units, we will find that for every 100 units we produce, maybe 5% of those units have defects and we can't sell them. Or perhaps for every 100 hours our labour force works, five of those hours are inefficient or they are not actually producing the units of our goods. We need to take these inefficiencies into account when we're preparing our budgets. So it may be the case that if we plan on selling a thousand units, we are going to have to produce 1,200 units to take into account any units that might have defects in them. Let's have a look at an exercise to see how this works. So, in this exercise, we're told that Truro Limited manufactures a single product Q with a single grade of labour. We're given its sales budget and finished goods stock budget for period of three, three of 2010. So we're told the number of sales units as well as our opening and closing stock budgets. Then we are told that goods are inspected only when production work is completed and it is budgeted that 10% of finished work will be scrapped. So for every 100 units we produce, 10 of those will have defects and will be going in the bin. We are also told that the standard direct labour hour content of product Q is 3 hours. So we expect each unit to take 3 hours to produce. The budgeted productivity ratio for direct labour is only 80%. This means that labour is only working at 80% efficiency. What we're being told here is that for every 100 hours we pay our labour staff for, they are only actually being productive for 80 of those hours. Now we're going to prepare, as required, our production budget and our direct labour budget. So we can see how we incorporate these inefficiencies into our budgeting process. So let's begin then with our production budget. We looked at production budgets in an earlier session and we saw that when we're considering our production budget, the first thing we need to look at are our sales units. If we're planning on selling 700 units, then we are going to need to make sure they are produced at some stage during the year. The next thing we needed to consider was our closing stock. Remember, our closing stock is the number of completed units we want to have left over at the end of the year. If we want to have them completed and in our warehouse at the end of the year, then we are going to have to produce them. So we add that on to the number of units we're going to produce. And finally, we consider our opening stock. Remember, our opening stock are the completed units available for sale in our warehouse at the start of the year. 
if they have already been completed and are ready to be sold on, then we do not need to produce these units. So we can subtract our opening stock from the number of units we're going to produce throughout the year. So we find then the number of required good units we are going to need to produce during the year is 720. Now I say required good units here because 720 is not the total number of units we are going to produce. 720 is the number of good units we need to be able to sell throughout the year. Let's have a look back at the question to consider our inefficiency. So, we are told that goods are inspected only when production work is completed and 10% of finished work will be scrapped. So if we only produce 720 units, 10% of those are going to be thrown in the bin. So we're not going to have enough units to meet our sales and our opening and closing stock budgets. We are going to have to produce more than 720 units to take into account this inefficiency. If we go back to our question then. If 10% of our units are going to be scrapped, then the other 90% needs to be the 720 good units we need left. So, our scrapped units will be 10% of the total units we produce and our required good units will be the other 90%. So, we know that 90% of our total production units has to be 720. So, we can use this to calculate how many units do we need to produce in total. So, what is our 100% figure? We can calculate this very simply by taking our 720 divided by 90% and multiplied by 100%. When we work that through, we will get 800. So, now we see we are actually going to have to produce 800 units. And of those 800 units, what's going to happen? 10% of those units will be scrapped. 10% of 800 is 80, which will leave us with the 720 units that we said we needed. And that's our production budget complete. Now, the next part of our question asks us to prepare the labour budget. So let's remind ourselves what have we been told about our labour hours for these units. We're told that each unit will take three hours to make. However, our labour force will only be productive for 80% of the time we pay them for. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate how many productive labour hours do we need to produce our 800 units? And then we're going to have to add on a certain number of labour hours to allow for this inefficiency in our process. So let's have a look. Our labour hours per unit are three hours.
So our productive hours required will be 800 units multiplied by 3 hours per unit. We get 2,400 hours. Okay, we've gotten this far. Now remember, we need to consider our inefficiency. We are going to have to add on our inefficient or unproductive hours paid. We are told that our labour staff will be productive for 80% of the total hours they are paid for. So our productive hours will be 80% of the total hours we pay them for. Our inefficient hours then will be the other 20% of the total hours we pay them for. So our total hours paid will be the sum of our productive hours plus our inefficient hours. We know that our 80% productive hours has to equal 2,400 in order to meet our production budget. So we can calculate then what will be the total hours paid by looking at that. So our total hours paid or our 100% figure will be 2,400 divided by 80% and multiplied by 100%, which gives us 3,000 hours. 20% of that, which is 600 hours, will be our inefficient hours paid leaving us with the 2,400 productive hours that we need.